Hello, my name's Hans and today at Roomba Brothers we're going to be servicing the ignition system on this 1981 MGB. Before we start we're going to use some tipex to mark the crankshaft pulley and the pointer. On this vehicle it's at the top and as you can see I've put a white spot on the top dead centre mark and on the pulley there. Before we disconnect any of the HT leads use your phone or a camera, take a photo or you can mark one, two, three and four cylinders with tipex and uh, that way if there's any confusion which way we need to replace any of the leads we can refer back to how the original was put together. First job is to remove the clips holding the distributor cap. This one's easy to get to, the other one you really do need a screwdriver to unclip it and then withdraw the cap, carefully remove all the HT leads. To remove the distributor, before we unbolt or disturb the timing, make sure that the rotor arm is pointing towards the post for the number one spark plug. When that's lined up with that post and top dead centre is marked with the flywheel, we can then undo the pinch bolt and either of these two bolts securing. The clamp plate can either be left on the distributor or it can be left attached to the engine. I'm going to leave it attached to the engine and then reset the timing afterwards. OK, we've loosened that pinch bolt and one of the clamp bolts at the back. We need to disconnect the vacuum advance pipe and undo the load tension connection from the points. Now we can carefully withdraw the distributor. So we removed the distributor complete. Before we do anything, I've just put a bit of tipex to mark the position of the rotor tip so that we know where to realign it when we put it all back together again and it'll slip, sit nicely back in the engine. This has a an offset flat pin so that if we try and fit it 180 degrees out it won't go back in but if we have it the right way it's not a problem. Before we disassemble everything I'm just going to check that this vacuum module here is operating the pivot plate and if we apply a bit of vacuum you should see it move. That's operating correctly. When I first checked the vacuum advance on this I noticed that the pivot plate wasn't moving and that was down to this screw obviously I've been lost in the past and it was too long causing it to bottom out and causing it not to rotate. We've now put a shorter screw in and everything's working fine. OK, before removing the points we need to disconnect the condenser and uh, remove that. So we'll carefully unhook and disconnect that cable and fit it back in there. We can now undo the little Phillips screw and carefully without dropping the screw remove the condenser. We need to feed the cable through now the condenser is out of the way we can remove the points carefully undo the screw and you can see why I'm doing this off the vehicle rather than on the vehicle can be done in the car but as you can see it's very fiddly and not easy to do so these are the new points I fitted the screw and uh, as you can see it shouldn't stick out very far at all I'm going to carefully lower it in and there's that hole there goes onto that little peg hopefully without losing the screw we can get a screwdriver on and just nip it up so that it's holding it all in position. Now we fit the condenser with the cable going through the hole. It only just fits. Pull the grommet through and we can now attach the cable onto the points quite fiddly and carefully 
snap it back. On said plastic housing, we can now put the little screw through the earth cable. and attach the condenser back. Now we need to adjust the points, have this slightly loose and if we rotate the cam it will open and shut the points. When it's fully open insert a 15 thou feeler gauge and uh, when we either close up the gap or open it up a bit we can then get the right gap and then tighten up the clamping screw. Apply a small piece of grease to the cam. There should be a little felt pad in there that you're supposed to oil but if it hasn't got one it works just as well with a little bit of grease. When we're doing that apply a couple of drops of engine oil to the felt pad in there. Finally get the new rotor arm. Notice the little peg in there. Line it up and uh, slide it on and then line up the top with your white mark ready for refitting. Okay we're going to refit the distributor and we carefully lower it into the engine block and then using the rotor arm just rotate it slightly and it should lock in, yeah we've locked in and make sure that it sits right in the middle of the base plate just make sure by twisting it and then when you put it more or less where it was before we can tighten up, nip up the bolts just slightly because we need to adjust it and connect all the low tension wire. Next job is to fit the distributor cap. Note the indent in there and carefully offer it up. Clip round the back, it's a bit awkward but we can get it on. Now we put the spark plug leads, these are all the same length and remembering where we left the white spot, that is number one plug lead. Insert that plug lead in and onto number one plug. Working anti-clockwise, number two, or the second one, goes to number three cylinder. So we put that on number three. The next one going anti-clockwise anti -clockwise is number four. So fitting that onto the next post. And that goes on to number four plug lead. We can tidy these up later. Lastly is number two. So we've fitted the cap, all the HT leads, got them all in the right order and now we've got a dwell meter set on four cylinders and we've put the positive to the low tension side of the points and we need the other side to earth. When we start the engine we should see that go to 51 degrees plus or minus 5 and that will see what our points are reading. Yep, quite happy with that, points are set fine. Note when I fitted the distributor I did not fit the vacuum advance pipe. That's because this needs to be fitted after I've set the timing. So before we set the timing I'm going to use something suitable just to plug the end hole to stop the vacuum altering the carburetor. Now we can do the timing. So we've got a nice timing light connected onto number one cylinder and we've actually connected the power supply onto the starter motor because that's the only place I can find a nice positive supply and earth on the bell housing. Now we've got this connected we can start the engine and then check to see what the timing reads. I set the timing to 10 degrees and if I put my hand on the distributor I can now move it until the two points line up together. When they're aligned the timing's now set at 10 degrees. Now we have the timing set correctly we can tighten up the pinch bolt 
Now notice I've removed the dipstick just to make a bit more easier access. It is quite fiddly. When we tighten that up, we can then tighten up the plate bolt around the rear. Finally, replace the vacuum pipe and the dipstick and uh, recheck the ignition timing and make sure that it corresponds to what distributor you have. There are so many versions of different one, you must look up what particular timing you have in your manual.